without a doubt, last episode, the best one of season two so far. Melt Redemption arc finally got executed and it was so good. And by the way, if you didn't notice, and maybe this is my headcanon, but because he said sorry about the ad lib to his partner, meaning he never did the crazy choreography that he was hiding in secret, he never practiced that in a real rehearsal, meaning he raw dogged it, risked everything on the line, and still clutched and then put on the lifetime performance and like everyone was so hyped up the visualizations to show melt's character development was just on point just peak peak episode now what's gonna happen well the main meats of the theater play the drama is the conflict between kana and akane right and whether or not himikawa or aqua is gonna be able to be the better support and Himeko, well, people glaze him a lot, and he does look pretty good as Blade. I can't even tell that the same characters because of what Himeko looks like and the, you know, the character designs after they hit in costume. But let's see what's gonna happen in today's reaction. Okay. It did. The wind started to play before he finished his line. Yo, who fucked that up? Yo, sound effect people, what are you doing? Based. Oh, in that moment, because the wind fucked it up, she just improv. Akane jealous? <laughs> that look is <laughs> all right, I suppose. さすが年齢イコール芸歴抜けてくれそうな安心感がある。こんなにやりやすい相手は初めてだ。ね、また日を改めてお会いしましょう。Pussy, you running away? All right, Melt got saved. <laughs> Wait, what did you call him? Are you chicken with tartar sauce? Ha! <laughs> Peak comedy! <laughs> Alright, Melt has been saved in play. Aqua time? Aqua time? Oh, <gasps> it's him! Human touch. Akane entrance. Whoa! Okay, that's pretty sick. That really sets the stage, huh? You can already feel like this is like the Empress or like some kind of queen. What's up, princess? This part changed the most. That's right. The whole conflict in the beginning was that Akane's character was really mid. And no one cared about her. And they all wanted Kana's character, right? That was the main ship. But during the revision of it, what happened? What do you think, Kana? Is it good? Yeah, that's what happens when she takes a bunch of notes and you know has a couple days to just full dive, right? She does like the whole method acting shit. So like, okay. Well, no, actually that's not quite accurate to say. Because like method acting is when you're in character the entire time that you're on set too, right? Not just when you're rehearsing, but outside of it. Aren't you supposed to be in character? But anyways, Akane's way is like delivering pretty well. Sensei is pretty happy here. Oh, other members from Sweet Day? Not Sweet Day, the other one. <laughs> I love this guy. Might be my favorite character. Might be my favorite character. I love how this is the role a salary man with fucking, you know, glasses is playing. Is he the narrator? Yo, straight up, is he the narrator of this show? That's what it seems like, right? Because he's like, 
breaking the not breaking the fourth wall, but he's like explaining to the audience like two factions, and this is what's gonna happen. Oh? Yo, Mel still has a role to play? Alright, off screen. Alright, round two for Mel. Of him winning? <laughs> it's just... Probably not fair to make the comparison, but Himeka just feels the most different. Because, like, would you ever see this and think Himekawa? No, right? But, like, also, we hardly ever see Himekawa. He's always looking like a disheveled guy wearing glasses who's, like, nonchalant about everything. So, therefore, this contrast in this Blade character is so much more refined, more exaggerated. <laughs> Kana versus Akane now? Oh shit, Boston's playing. Oh shit! This looks like a domain expansion. I don't It's just like two rivals that like are always in competition, thinking they're hating each other. But by the end, it's probably gonna be like, no, I always respected you. No, I respect you more and blah, blah, blah like that. Okay. Her Oshi. Back then. No? Backstory time? What truly happened back then? Because, like, we know from last episode of episode that before that, like, Kana was, like, peaking in, like, preschool. And uh, Akane was, like, a big fan. But beyond that, I wonder if there was, like, a moment where Akane wanted, like, a, a, like an autograph or something, you know? Like, oh, you're my idol, you're my hero, I want to be just like you. And Kana was like, <laughs> you're already watched, don't talk to me. And then she was like, oh! My hero just said that, and, and then this is the whole villain arc and trying to get revenge. Like, what is it? Here's little Kana back then. What? Oh, I think this is a commercial or some sort of movie shoot right now. That's right. Ten seconds flat. No one does it faster. Yeah, that's what it seems like on TV. But she's a fucking demon behind the scenes. Everyone hates this little bitch. Is she about to go meet her hero and realize that you shouldn't do that? Yo, is that Piplup? You haven't even tried it though. Come on, girl. So, so. Yo, that's fucked up, dad. Manipulating your kid by saying, like, you might even become friends with this superstar kid. That's fucked up, dad. Wow, look at her eyes, bro. Look at the eye. It's like fireworks going off in her eyes right now. All right, little baby Ka uh, Akane training arc. Man, the bell pepper commercial making kids eat their vegetables might be the greatest propaganda of all time. Now 
she obsessed over Kana, huh? Aqua! Episode 1! Yo! She already met her future boyfriend back then and she never even knew! Akane locked in. Oh, wait, what? Did you just cut your hair to be like Kana? <laughs> the adoration? This, this is the couple stages, right? In the beginning, you're like inspired, right? In the beginning, you're inspired. They're like your hero and they're like, wow, so cool. Then you want to be like them, you know, the biggest fan. You want to like look like them. You want to get their same hairstyle, talk the way they do, do the things that they like. And then you grab a knife and you show up at their door, you kill them. Then you take their skin off. Then you put their skin over you. And then you become them. That's the final stage, dude. Uh-uh, this is a little dangerous. Oh? Emily Mama, Akane Mama. There's a lot of mamas. Never meet your heroes, man. Never meet your heroes. You don't know them. They don't know you. You just see this one perspective. You, all you see is this carefully crafted PR image of what that brand, what that personality is supposed to be on camera. And you delude yourself into thinking, wow, this person's so cool. I want to be just like them, right? It's just like all the fucking monkeys in my YouTube comment section seeing me as just like a funny anime reactor guy. Then they show up on my Twitch stream and they say, I'm your biggest fan. And I say, shut the fuck up, you parasocial retard. Just watch the reaction, then fuck off. And they go, he's never my friend. <laughs> Listen, at the very least, I don't sell that delusion, right? I never sell that delusion. I put a fucking wall immediately, okay? But, you know, Kana doesn't, Akane doesn't know that about Kana. So she about to get let down, man. <laughs> Uh oh. Fresh satellite. Kanna Arima. So cute, man. I'm not Kana. Kana-chan. Oh oh! It's cause the hat was so similar. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, the real one is here. Oh no! Kana-chan. <laughs> what is this stance by Kana, dude? She looks so menacing here. It's like a six-year-old kid, dude. What the fuck is this aura? Look. I'm a big fan. Number one fan. I want to be like you. I got the same haircut, too. <laughs> you got no clue how the industry works, Akane. You're just a child. You have no clue what happens behind the scenes. <laughs> oh no. Hey, at least she's being honest. That shit happens a lot in real life too. Like for example, when you're on the job hunt and you see a lot of job applications from a company, but they never actually take application interviews and everything has already been settled internally on who's gonna get that job, but the listing is out there for labor laws and bullshit like that. It happens a lot. Part of the business. Damn. Dude, this is straight up. Akane is like the people that are begging for me to still react to viral hit and mission Yozakura. And they're coming into every stream saying, but it's about watching the enemies that you, you want to watch, right? And then me, I'm like, no. All that matters is satisfying the algorithm, goddammit! It's all about the numbers! 
the passion or love it's about what people want and you gotta give what the people they want <laughs> oh man bro this is like first year into college you're bright you're innocent you have dreams hopes aspirations fourth year senior <laughs> Depressed, cynical, jaded, gave up on any hope for possibilities of the future. <laughs> I think that Kana doesn't believe that, right? She's just lashing out because this is the brutal reality of the industry. And she wants probably things to be different too, but she can't because she's part of the system. Damn. Oh, not the head, dude! No, this is so me. She got the head to be just like you, and you knocked the head away. This is fucked. This is like sad and funny, but sad and fu I like it's it's like oh my god the kid realizing like my hero, my hero. This is the way you see me. The hat I got, the haircut I got just for you. This is so. But it's also like three year old kids fucking doing this. <laughs> oh fuck. Poor Akane man. <laughs> yeah, I ate all those bell peppers for you. The commercials didn't ever mean anything. <laughs> she never eating bell peppers ever again, bro. Oh man, that's heavy. That is fucking heavy, man. Your entire reason, your idol, your Oshi, giving you a dose of reality, and that's why it's never good to idolize people, right? It's never good to idolize people. You don't know them. You don't know me, and I don't know you, and that's fine. It's all about the content and having fun, and we end it there. But the moment that you try to pry beyond that boundary, and the more you think that you know someone, when reality hits and when it sets in, it's going to be fucking sad like this. That hat, man. You throw that hat away. Grow your hair out now. Fuck that girl. Psychology? <laughs> you went to read psychology books and try to understand why she feels that way? <laughs> wow. That's a next level hustle. She got that determination, man. And honestly, because of this, right? Because she tries to understand people, right? That's the whole investigation part. How she can make the connections and clues. And that's why she's the closest to, Akane, so, to um, Aqua Secret. And that's why she can also understand the psyches of different characters and play from that perspective, right? So, could you not say Kana was the best thing to ever happen to Akane? Because the theater goddess was born on that day due to that event. And if Akane did not go out to pursue learning psychology. <laughs> so, so what? Kana, let's go Kana? Let's, let's fucking go Kana. Kana's the hero of this story. Is that what's happening? <laughs> it's like the same thing of like when children get traumatized, sometimes they fold, but sometimes they persevere and they do great things in their life. But then what are you going to say that? Oh, dub trauma. Let's fucking go. So worth. I don't know, man. But this is a reformed Kana, you know? Oh. Yeah. Because by then, right, her career was pretty much on like a tipping point. And like things, she already peaked and she was going downhill and she's already mad and 
everything's going bad and this is what she's going through, right? That'll forever haunt her. The bell pepper lore. <laughs> Memcho, Ruby! Yeah, and this is pretty much like Kana's like redemption story all throughout season one now. And Akane can completely understand that. She's so level headed and mature. Oh! What the? Oh! 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 They had me in the first half? Hold up! We're going a completely different direction now. Cut. Nah. Akane is about to destroy her. She was the star. Prime Kana, bro. Six years old. <sighs> what? The version that she remembered as a child, that's the one, the son. And now, this reformed Kana, she a pussy, bro. She weak. So Akane wants the old one back? Whoa, the star. You see that shit? The star, bro. Yo, this fucking blue lock shit. <laughs> you need to devour, right? You need to have your ego come out and be selfish. Akane is about to put on that blue lock performance, be that idealized Kana, right? She is going to be that Kana from the past. The Kana can't be now. Let's go. Devour Kana right now. Oh shit, dude. She's about to do it. She's about to do it. Oh shit! <laughs> oh! Not a single starring gun. Double starring gun, dude. Not one. Both eyes this time. <laughs> Locked in, Akane. Locked in. Yo, power scalers. Where, where the power scalers at? Is so. Is this star level, right? Like we are beyond small towns. We're beyond country, continent. We're beyond moon, planet level, right? We're beyond that. This is like mid, mid, mid dwarf star, dwarf star plus. Small, no, 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 not small. No, no, we're still star level, but these are two stars, guys. Not a single star. These are two stars, and two stars are like star plus. I don't really know where we're going with this. Suyui. <laughs> Hottest girl of Oceanoko right there. Not Ruby, not Ruby, the mom. She shines brighter than everyone else. Oh! You see that shit? She closed her eyes and dodged it. Boom, boom, boom. Three piece combo dodged. <laughs> she can fucking fly? <laughs> the strings lifting her up. <laughs> wow. Rachel wishes. Rachel wishes she could be Akane, bro. You wanna be a fucking star? You can never be the scar. She is the star. She is the fucking night sky right now. She is the galaxy, bro. Look at this. Akane is on a universal level right now. Rachel? Nah, bro. Rachel fucking sucks. What the? Little kind of crying. Wait, 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 wait. What's holding her back? The past? 
Oh, the depression, bro. Oh, no. When she got washed and she couldn't get any more jobs. Oh, my God. Yo, you... Her controller disconnected mid-fight? No, no, no. She'll clutch. She'll clutch. She'll clutch. She'll figure out a way to fucking improvise right now. Yo, you can't be doing this right now. Yes. So Akane shined too hard and it's making it harder for Kana to like collaborate and she's fading into obscureness? It was I but she oh I thought she always like has good synchro with whoever she works with and is whoever she's working with is better than the better he's gonna be. But isn't it like the past Kana, right? It's like the past Kana, the part like the past trauma like preventing her. Then I will play my role in the shadows. Fuck it. Devour her. Nah, we gotta blue lock this shit. Let your inner egos come out and shine. You know what's better than a single star shining? Two stars shining. Nah, inner egoist. Akane wants Kana to be egoist though. Damn. I think that maybe it's my head cannon, but like a psychological block of peaking early on and not wanting because like there's a block. There's like a psychological mental block and she remembers the past and how much she peaked and how much she's fallen off the grace. And right now she's in this comfort spot where she is in the road to redemption. And she might not be peaking anymore, but she has a different strategy of supporting and working off of others well. But in this one moment, when she was so close to attaining that egoist status back, she shies away from it because of how painful it was last time to be on that stage and to fall off. Therefore, the imagery of the small Kana crying is to represent that. And I don't know if she's going to be able to overcome it. It would be cool for her to overcome it and to have two stars here instead of just one. <laughs> Kana, come on. Aqua, say something. I don't know if that's the end of the Kana story, but it looks like we're cutting a short there. She's not going to have that, like, rise to her prime form just yet in this arc. Shibu incident. <laughs> you know what you should play right now? <laughs> you should play this shit right now, bro. Yeah! Teenage trauma! Wait, 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 wait. It is so crazy that they fucking played that when Itadori Yuji was having a fucking mental breakdown. Okay. Now what? I'm not really following the story with the plot, by the way. <laughs> Akane and Kana was fighting. Did Akane win? Did she lose? Hmm. You wanted to devour her! But I hope that Kana would match it. Aqua! Aqua will handle it, bro. Can you help her understand herself? <laughs> this is rare. Not an Akane pout. Lady, whatever fucking her name is, Pout, Sayo Pout or something, Saya Pout. This, this is Akare Pout in costume. So Alright, the ending's playing, but next episode, we'll drag Kana back out. Sun. That's today's Oshinoko's episode. Today, again, like. Ah, dude, every Oshinoko episode ever since we went into the theater place is fucking fantastic. And what was today's episode mainly about? Um, 
it was mostly about Akane and Kana, right? So the whole Akane flashback, again, you should never idolize anybody. You don't know your heroes. They're just a movie star. They're just an idol. They're just some, some person you threw through a screen. You don't really know them. And once you have a diluted fantasy of who they are in your imagination and you meet them, you're gonna get disappointed because all of that was based upon a fake image, right? Just It's just entertainment and you gotta cut it off. But Akane here, after this brutal fucking realization of Kana was, she did not like revert back into her shell or get traumatized. She looked at like a, what's it called? She, she she wanted to understand why Kana was feeling like that. And then learned so much about psychology, a bunch of self-study. And that's pretty much the basis of her acting skills now too. Being able to understand different characters and almost like becoming them by understanding their psyche. So you could say that thanks to Kana being mean, Akane was able to become the person she is. And on the other side, Kana, this... This brutal veteran <laughs> three years old <laughs> so much it's just funny that they're fucking kids <laughs> and it's just this this scene here <laughs> with these kids they're like five six years old and she's talking like she been in the industry for fucking 20 years and she's corrupt <laughs> it was so funny and sad at the same time but think about what kana has been going through too right this is basically the tail end of her rise to fame she's not getting much roles anymore her attitude is pissing off a lot of people things are looking pretty bad and you know you can kind of imagine you know why kana did that to akane basically just lashed out but akane never gave up and she wanted kana to be good in fact her idealized form of Kana is this kindergarten Kana, this preschool Kana, where she had this ego. Instead of being a supporting cast, be the main person, but she shies away from it. As we were so close to getting it, right? Akane wanted to like be a star and draw and bring the sun back to the glory. But then the imagery of Kana not being able to take a step forward as she sees the crying self is just a mental block as she remembers how hard it was of a fall off it was when you got to that prime stage and obviously that's what's you know preventing her from becoming the sun but aqua's got a plan aqua says he's gonna drag the sun out so next episode the combined efforts of aqua and akane maybe we'll get kana to shine brighter than the sun and that's it from me if you're still here though and if you enjoyed this reaction please like the video check out the other playlist for more content and until next time take care